All right, hey there, we're looking at Math 8 today and we're talking about uh, Lesson 14 Unit 1, Alternate Interior Angles was what you talked about today. And really it's about looking at why some angles are always equal to one another. So the first thing you want to do is said find the measure of angle J G H of this part right there and to show your reasoning. If you recall from a previous lesson, one of the things we talked about was that this line right here, when we've been working with translations, when I move this over to here, I have a straight line. That straight line we said was 180 degrees. So what we're asking about for JGH is what's missing. What is the missing part there? So 180 minus 30 tells me that what remains is 150 degrees in this space right there. And that's what JGH would be. It says find and label a second 30 degree angle in the diagram. Find and label an angle congruent to JGH. And so to do that, what we're looking at are what are called vertical angles straight across from another. They go like this. This would be a 30 degree angle right in there. And over here for JGH, if this is 150, then this space right here is also 150 degrees. And that's part of what you start off looking at today. Then you begin to talk about cutting parallel lines or what's called a transversal. Now a transversal means that this line meets each of the parallel lines in exactly one point. So our parallel lines here are D, um, our parallel lines are right here, right? This is our parallel line. We have DF here, which is parallel to AC here. These lines are parallel to one another. Our transversal is the one that cuts across this at exactly one point. That is our transversal line right there. So what we're talking about then are the angle measurements that are formed when this happens. So one of the things we notice is, first of all, it said that in this space right here, I have a degree angle measurement of 63 degrees. This same angle measurement is also the one located over here, 63 degrees. We know about vertical angles being the ones across from them, so we could say that this angle measurement is 63 degrees, and right across from there is 63 degrees. At this point, we've already identified three of the angle measurements. What's left to do is to see what's left, what remains. And we said before that because these angles form straight angles here to here, we find out what remains is 180 minus 63, and we subtract and we end up with 117 degrees is what's left of these angle measurements. So that means that E would be 117 degrees, across from it would also be 117, down here is 117 and across from it is 117 degrees and so that's what's taking place from one measurement to the next all right so this is what we have so we found the measurements of those there and what we're supposed to talk about in your little groups is what do you notice about the angles of the vertex b and the angles of the vertex e what we notice is that they are equal to one another that they are the same when you go across from one to the other so the transversal, when it cuts through two parallel lines, will form two sets of vertical angles. All right, it's kind of cool. The other thing you notice is that, gosh, when you look at this here, you have matching parts here and here. And we call these two things alternating interior angles. Interior means it's on the inside of the parallel, parallel lines, right? Or inside the parallel lines. And alternating means we're going from one side of the transversal to the other, right? We're hopping across, alternating there. So that's our alternating interior angle. So this one matches over there. That is our alternating interior angle. When we look at the shape of number three, we had here, it said, okay, knowing what we know so far, we have, in this case, once again, we have a parallel line, DEF, that goes with A, B, C, right? And then we had a transversal that ran along this line right there. Great. So now we're looking at what measurements we can, we know. Because we know this is 34 degrees, then the vertical angle across would also be 34 degrees. 
the alternate interior angle would be the other interior. We're on the inside here, right? Interior, that's the interior. And on the other side of the blue line would be the alternate interior angle, which would also be 34 degrees. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. But it says find the measures of the four angles at point B in the second diagram. No problem. If that's 34, the whole thing should be 180. So once again, I'll do 180 minus 34 to find out what's missing from that question mark right there. 10 minus 4 is 6, 7 minus 3 is 4. So I have 146 degrees missing over here. Now knowing what I know about vertical angles, if it's 146 here, then straight across would also be 146. And if that's 34, straight across would also be 34 degrees right there. So now we've found the measurements for all those missing parts right there, no problem. Let's look at your next one. The next one is a little bit different, right? Because while there is a, a line that does cut across two of our initial lines, when we look at these two lines here, what we notice is, is that unlike the other ones, that's the first one, here's a second one, you notice that they seem to be coming together. At some point, they're going to cross, aren't they? Right? This is going to be a problem. There's going to be a place where they cross, which means these are not parallel lines. That's key there. If we are not dealing with parallel lines, then our rules are going to be not the same, are they? Now, some rules will be the same. For example, when I'm looking at this space, a vertical angle is still a vertical angle when I have two lines crossing one another. So if this is 108 degrees, over here I also have 108 degrees, and I still can find the, vert, the supplementary angle. Supplementary means what's left when I do 180 minus 108, because they add up to 180. I have 72 degrees here and 72 degrees here. Notice that this degree measurement, this alternate interior angle, does not match that one. The reason for that is because I do not have parallel lines. So this is, becomes a 63, across is 63, and now I need to find that measurement there. So I do 180 minus 63, and I come up with 117, 117. So while I have a, a line that goes across, it's not functioning the same way as the previous examples because these two lines are not parallel. But I still have vertical angles that allow me to solve for the missing angle measurements, and I can use what I know about straight angles to use 180 degree supplementary angles to combine that to make 180, all right? And you did some explanation there to talk about how they're the same, how they're different, and you moved on from there. Well, the last one, or one of the last ones here, you did look at a shape in this case here. We looked at a shape and what you noticed was that because I had an angle measurement on this line using this transversal, this transversal is gonna create an angle of 55 degrees right here which means the same angle is gonna be up here at 55 degrees. Now, if that's 55 and that's 55, what I also know then is that because of straight angle measurements or supplementary angles, the combination of all of this space should be 180 degrees. Now, this X is gonna be the same as this space here, we'll call that X. So what we're saying in essence is that 55 plus 60 plus I don't know should add up to 180 degrees. That's the math involved in this little problem here. So 60 and 55 is going to be 115. That's what those add up to. So 180 minus 115 is going to give me 65 degrees is what's left. So my value of x here is 65 degrees, which makes this corresponding angle measurement also 65 degrees. Moving down to the bottom section here, we have two parallel lines, L and K. It tells you that they are parallel, right? So we know that L is parallel to K, no problem. It says we have a transversal T that cuts across those, no problem. And it says that M is the midpoint of segment PQ, this point right there. Find a rigid transformation that shows that angles MPA and MQB 
are congruent. So MPA is right here. This is our MPA, right? We want to show that this angle measurement is congruent to MQB. We want to prove that our alternate interior angles, alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. They're going to be the same. Well, the way to do that would be to take a piece of tracing paper here and I'm going to draw my shape. I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to copy my transversal, which I've all marked up so it's not perfect. Label point P, Q, B, P, and A. And you ready for this? What we wanted to do is if I do a transformation, 180 degree rotation, and I plop that right on top of it, what I find is that my angle measurements, because they're just moving around, are exactly the same. So let's take a look at this here. What we're saying is that this angle measurement here, here, this angle measurement, I want to get it up to this spot right there. And if I get it there and it snaps in place, whoop, which it does, now I have the same degree, the same angle measurement. This angle matches that angle measurement because an alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so this one here, we can call this X, is gonna match this one here, X, every single time. In this shape here, it's not gonna work out as well. And the reason for that is gonna be, do you recognize why, once again? L and K are not parallel lines. Because they cross, they're not gonna work the same. Even though M is the midpoint of that one there, that midpoint is not going to help us when we rotate things around, right? So here's the little shape here. There's this one. Here's this guy. Here's this guy. And here's M. Here's my angle measurement. When I rotate it around, I never can get to snap in place there because they're not parallel lines. It won't work. So in summary, when two lines intersect, vertical angles are equal. So when two lines intersect, vertical angles are equal and adjacent angles are supplementary. So it means it adds up to 180. So these two things add up to 180 degrees, just as these two also add up to 180 degrees. We also then looked at a couple things that you have a transversal, means that it cuts across parallel, two parallel lines and your alternate interior angles are created. The alternate interior angles mean that if I have parallel lines, I have alternate interior angles and they are going to be equal to one another. Okay, so those are a couple key things from today. So let's take a look at your homework for today. It said first of all to use the diagram to find the measure of each angle. So first we want to find ABC, that's this measurement right here. This measurement is going to be what's left from 180 minus 50 which is 130 degrees. So ABC is 130 degrees. Once I know that, I can use what I know about vertical angles to find the rest. EBD, EBD is a vertical angle of 130. And then ABE here is a vertical angle lining up with the 50 degrees there. Number two, lines K and L are parallel. Right, so again we have parallel lines there. And we notice that we have this transversal that goes across here, okay? And it tells us right away that angle ABC, ABC right in here, is 19 degrees. If that is 19 degrees, let's explain why the measure of angle ECF is 19 degrees. So why is this also 19 degrees is the question. And it says if you get stuck, consider translating line L by moving B to C. Meaning, if you're not sure, well, what happens if I take this shape right here? Here's B. And here's this right here. If I just translate this to there, does it match? It sure does. That's going to be the same thing. So, you want to be able to explain why those are going to be the same. Okay? So, because we have a shape here, notice that this 19, the alternate interior angle would be 19 and because this is a set of vertical angles it would also be 
19. But you have to explain why that's going to be. What is the measure of BCD? BCD, we just said that it was also going to be 19. And explain that it's an alternate interior angle. And you write that out in your own words how you explain that. For number three, it has a diagram here shown. And it says to find the measure angle measures marked with the question marks. We do have a line that looks like a transversal, except that if you notice here, we do not have parallel lines. These lines are not parallel, so be careful. So let's find out what we have. If this is 53, then the angle across from it, the vertical angle, is also 53 degrees. If this is 70, the angle across from it is 70 degrees. To find out what's missing right here, we'll do 180 minus 70, which gives me 110 degrees, which also makes this 110 degrees. For over here, we'll do 180 minus 53, and we'll come up with 127 degrees is what's missing right here, and directly across, 127 degrees for that one as well. How are we doing? Hope we're doing okay. We're almost done. It says two figures are scaled copies of each other. What are some ways you can tell they are scaled copies? You might notice some things like they have the same number of sides. You might notice that the angle measurements seem to be very similar to one another. You have to confirm that. Might be things you see there. We can also see that here we're going to go from A to C is a distance of 2. And from P to R we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're going from 2 to 6, which means my scale factor from one to the other is times 3. I have a scale factor of times 3. So going this way, my scale factor is multiplying by 3. If I'm going to go this way, though, from 6 to 2, my scale factor would be divided by 3. Or I could think of that as times 1 third. Okay, it's the inverse of the multiplying by 3, and so I multiply by 1 third. That's what's taking place there. Are there other ways to figure that out? There certainly are. You could do some work there. We could look at this length is 1. This one is 1, 2, 3. So a 1 and a 3 scale factor 1 times 3, or 3 divided by 3 is 1, and it gets you there as well. So that's a scale factor thing. This is actually a little bit of review from Math 7. So have a great day. See you next time.